Slaveski versus Jostenis Sadeño. And even though Gogo only has a one in height advantage, he has a forest reach advantage, he's going to want to utilize that. Get in, close that distance, because Sadeño's going to be moving a lot. So Gogo's going to have to get in there, land those punches from far, land power shots, try to slow down Sadeño. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now set. Welterweight title eliminator fight scheduled for five two-minute rounds. Presented to you by OnlyFans. Sanctioned by the South Carolina Athletic Commission. Chairman in attendance, Edwin Estridge. Commissioners in attendance, Dr. John Lucas Coleman Bates. Administrator in attendance, John Hollingsworth. The three judges scoring our main event, Inkem Udea. Choice, Stamey, Barry, Lindemann. And the third man inside the squared circle, our referee in charge of the action at the bell, Andrew Glenn. And now, with our bare knuckle fans watching live worldwide on the BKFC app for the first time here in the great state of South Carolina from the sold out John T. Road Sports Center. Fight fans of Myrtle Beach. It's time to knuckle off. Introducing you first. Fighting out of the red corner. Tonight he wears pink and white. He stands five feet, eight inches tall. His official weight, but even 170 pounds. He is undefeated in the squared circle at 2-0. Fighting out of Hallandale Beach, Florida, by way of Cuba. Here is the undefeated, Jos Dennis, the Pink Panther, Sedania. Across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears white and pink. He stands five feet nine inches tall. His official weight, 165 and one half pounds. He is also undefeated at 4 and 0, fighting out of Chicago, Illinois, by way of Miami, Florida, and Skopje, Macedonia. Here is the undefeated Goryan. Slaveski told us, I'm confident with my speed, I'm confident with my power, I just need to land my punches. Champion of BKFC's 155, and that's ruled a slip. 155 and 165 pounds. 
This is a BKFC 165-pound world title eliminator. Gogo wants to hit his opponent, so but he's kind of over the top right now, throwing some wild punch. I'd like to see him throw the body. You can duck underneath the headshots. You can't duck under his body. Stop, stop, stop. It was the duck under again from Cedeno, and nearly through the ropes goes Gorion Slaveski, and with that time called by Andrew Glenn. Take your time. You all right? Jack Reese explains. You okay? Soft Good warnings, go. which is essentially oh, you know, soft warnings. Hard warnings. And then the point of hard warning, which is what Andrew Glenn gave you, Dennis Cedeno means push again like that and lose a point. To the collection of the breaks. Slavesky. That is the end of round one. Now come on. Knuckle up from referee Andrew Glenn. Cedeno immediately to the outside. This is your Stennis Sedania. Sedania now on the rush. That's clearly a push move. The slip correctly as such by Glenn. A little bit of a headbutt accident in there with that mixing sky right there. That in and out motion right there by Sedania. Sedania on the hard feint. 90 seconds remaining round two. I mean, if they go in this position, they just continue to throw that, that uppercut right there with that left hand. I think we'll do a lot of damage. He throws that straight out of time. Just misses indeed from Slaveski. Right hand just misses from Sedano. Left hand misses again from Slaveski. Now the jab from Southpaw from Gordon and Slaveski. Duck under again. That's rule the slip. Now the left hand. Sedano got on the slip right back up. You can just tell Sedano the entire time he's messing with his hand wraps. It's bothering him for some reason. Swing and a miss from Slaveski. Jab landed from Gorion Slaveski. Overhand right from Sedanio into the clutch. Get back clean. No punch. Five seconds remaining round number two. And look, Sedanio right now continuing to mess with his head out. Slaveski started the run towards Sedanio with his back turn. Well spotted. Taking care of Andrew Glenn. He stepped between Slaveski and Sedanio. Sedanio has a difficult start.
start round number four. Big swings at the pocket from Slovensky. There's the jab. Daniel moving on the outside. Right up to the body. Right hook to the head from the Macedonian Gorion Slovensky. Daniel's legs still don't seem to be underneath him all the way. Left hand, right hand. That turns your Dennis to Daniel. Swings from Slavesky. Right hand. Straight right hand from Slavesky on the jab. A lot more punches you can see Slavesky over doubling up his opponent. It was nearly a spinning back fist, which is illegal under this pair of rules set. Sedania missed. Slavesky can play the referee Andrew Glenn. So, some more headshots and proceedings. Better for Slavesky right there. steps in and calls a stop to this fight at 1 minute 53 seconds into round number four for your winner by TKO and your new number one contender for the BKFC World Welterweight Championship, Goryan Gogo Slavaski. Jostenis Sedanio came in 2-0. One of the best movers on the BKFC roster, Gorion Slaveski, wore him down, slowed him down, and ultimately finished him. The winner, by way of fourth round TKO, Gorion Slaveski defeats Jostenis Sedanio. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. 
Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare-knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with a new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship presents BKFC 49, Friday, August 25th. In the main event, two undefeated warriors collide with a world title at stake as Corian Gogo Salveski knuckles up with Gypsy Jake Lindsay. In the co-main event, the battle-tested gentleman of violence, Tom Schof, returns to take on the undefeated rookie sensation, Bryce Baby Yaga Henry. Don't miss History Unfold. Watch it live on the BKFC app. Download it at BKFC.com. Connor Tierney versus Jake Lindsay. Our tale of the tape is presented by Crescent Tools. One inch reach difference, three inch height difference. Not that much right here. It's going to be who's able to come in here, implement the game plan, control the range. That person is going to win the fight, Sean. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now set. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the welterweight division. Presented to you by OnlyFans. Tonight's main event is regulated by the ISKA UK Director Paul Nichols. ISKA European President in attendance, Paul Hennessy. The three judges scoring our main event. Paul Mully, Dave Needham, Tony Crooks. And the third man inside the squared circle, our referee in charge of the action at the bell, Chris Batchelor. And now, with our bare knuckle fans watching live worldwide on the BKFC app from the Crystal Palace National Sports Center, fight fans of London. To knuckle ah! Introducing you first Fighting out of the red corner Tonight he wears black and gold He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall His official weight 165.2 pounds He is undefeated In the squared circle at 3-0 Fighting out of Manhattan, Kansas, USA. Here is the undefeated Gypsy Jake Lindsay. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears blue trimmed in yellow and silver. He stands six feet, two inches tall. His official weight, an identical 165.2 pounds. His impressive bare knuckle fighting record stands at seven victories opposite a single defeat. Fighting out of Birmingham, England. Here is Connor. Jake Lindsay said Connor Tierney is a very good mover, but he moves in predictable patterns on the outside. Lindsay said, I have to move unpredictably to establish myself in the clinch, in the pocket. The fighters moved off from scratch. The call of toe the line from Chris Batchelor, the bell round number one. Blue trunks for the Englishman from Birmingham, Connor Tierney. Black trucks for the American from Kansas, Jake Lindsay. Very measured start. These two accomplished fighters. There's the right hand on the step in from Lindsay. Really, right now, this is exactly the range, Chris, where he told us he wants to be. Yep, just outside where he can get hit and he can control when and where he throws punches. 40 seconds gone, round number one. Extreme patience, extreme poise from both men. Jab not fully getting through. It's not getting through. Counter hook from Lindsay. Oh, 
Some disquiet in this London crowd, but these are not reckless fighters. There's the jab from Jake Lindsay. I like when Lindsay just trying to mirror the hips right there. Stay right in front of his opponent the entire time. See heavy feints from Connor Tierney on the outside, trying to open up Jake Lindsay. And 45 seconds remaining round number one of our main event. The fighters feigning with the jab overhand right not there for Tierney. Lindsay with the left hand trying to turn up the pressure with 30 seconds remaining round one. And that he's almost landing that left hook several times right now. Connor Tierney's got to be careful, careful to keep that right hand up. Right to the body from Lindsay. Then he hands high and tight, doubling the jab from range. Second jab landed in that last sequence. And he just off the mark from Tierney, right hand again. Lindsay resetting his feet, driving into the clinch. Half tie plum snatched by Tierney, and the bell, that ends round number one. And I think right there what Jake Lindsay learned is he cannot throw one punch. He's got to throw combinations against a guy like Tierney. Round number two. Immediately, Tierney on his back foot, pumping the jab. Lindsay high open guard, looking to parry, looking to enter. And Lindsay said, I have to establish myself in the pocket, in the clinch, then be very heavy and active in the clinch. Right hand to the body. There's that lateral movement we talked about from Connor Tierney. To the clinch. Short from the half tie plum by Tierney. Now Lindsay with the right hand to the body. Separation from Chris Batchelor. 80 seconds remaining round two. Jab to the body from Tierney. Overhand right. Lindsay looking to counter back to the jab. Jab head, jab body from Tierney. Continuous jabs from Connor Tierney. Stiff jab there from Tierney. Right to the body, 1-1-2. One, one, 50 seconds remaining, round two. Tierney pulling back that windmill overhand right. A rare undisciplined punch from Tierney, and he caught it mid-flight. Now into the clinch. Lindsay immediately throwing short body head with the right hand. Setting from the outside, double jab. Back to the body. Even the jabs that don't land, land from range, Chris for Connor Tierney, are keeping Lindsay on the outside, which is exactly where Lindsay does not want to be. It's exactly what he's trying to do, control the right. Go right in! Down goes Connor Tierney! Just a right hand lead. Tierney was bouncing, he didn't see that one coming, it got through. Three. You can see that it's really fired up Jake Lindsay right now. But not getting through from Tierney. And there's that right to the body. Lindsay reaching for that jab, resetting his feet. Which of stances for Jake Lindsay, opening his chest, moving the southpaw. Overhand left from southpaw, not there. Transition right back to orthodox for Lindsay. Now the jab. Tierney staying long, step in right, left hand not there. Good elusiveness from Tierney. Man, when these guys tie up, they really go to work fast. Heavy in the clinch. Credit Connor Tierney. Lindsay's game is to be in the clinch, but Tierney throwing with high volume when Lindsay initiates those clinches. 65 seconds remaining, round three. Tierney has not looked intimidated. He has not been bullied by Lindsay in the clinch. And that was part of the game plan for Lindsay. Get in there, bully your opponent around. Has not been able to happen yet. Ready to shake Lindsay. Looking through that persistent piston like jab with Connor Tierney from outside. Dropping Tierney in round two with that right hand. Back to that piston like jab. Doubling it up is Connor Tierney. 
30 seconds remaining round three. Jab to the body. Jab right back to the head from Lindsay. There's just no rush, no panic from either fighter. You can just see right now, I can see Lindsay just waiting with that right hand, looking for another opportunity to, to explode in on there. It was. didn't work, but he's trying. Both men exuding their skill set. Oh. Having their moments in the moment for Connor Tierney on the overhand right, dropping Jake Lindsay. Lindsay's hurt. Same thing right there. I think that jab of Connor Tierney, it lulled Lindsay to sleep. Huge overhand right there. The fighters back up the scratch, sporting touch of hands. Right back to it. See if Lindsay's legs are back underneath him enough right here. But I would think that Tierney might want to try and jump all over him. Lindsay missing with that naked step in right hand. Counter left on the hook from Tierney. Sting on the outside, continually playing off of the jab. Long, accurate jab throw from Connor Tierney. He's Lindsay trying to looking to parry. He's trying to set up that right hand once again. Is Tierney? Trying to lull Lindsay to sleep. A lot of left hands. A lot of left hands just went for the right time. As soon as Lindsay's not paying attention, the right hand's coming. Heavy feints. Lindsay saw the entry into the clinch. Lindsay continuing to throw to the body. Now the separation from referee Chris Batchelor. 55 seconds remaining, round four. Duck under from Lindsay, right hand. Turning up the jab. Lindsay off the jab, 1-1-2 one, one, for Jake Lindsay into the half-tie plum. Lindsay tried to be heavy. Tierney was elusive, and pulled himself out defensively. Right hand, left hand. Huge overhand right. Tierney looked like he had him hurt for a second. What? Time called by Chris Batchelor. Was that for a mouthpiece being knocked out? I don't know if I'd have called it. It still looked like they were in the middle of an exchange. The clock is ticking, but time has been called. It's not the official time on your screen. Perhaps 20 seconds remaining in round number four. There's a mouthpiece out for Jake Lindsay. That's why Batchelor called time. Counter right hand from Jake Lindsay. Multiple jabs from Lindsay. 10 second clack overhand right. Big uppercut in the clinch from Tierney. Final seconds, round four. The bell. We move to the fifth and final round. Two rounds apiece is not inconceivable as we enter the fifth and final round of our main event. Connor Tierney versus Jake Lindsay. Up and down movement. Entry on the hook from Tierney, not there. Now peace out again for Jake Lindsay. Again, time called by Batchelor right back in. Now peace in, time in. Lindsay to the inside, snatches the single collar tie, half tie plum. Lindsay with the left hand, the volume, good turn from Connor Tierney. Great job, because Lindsay was doing some good work in there. You can tell Connor Tierney's been very well versed now. He's been practicing this different style, working well for him. On the left hand. Soft warning by Bachelor to Tierney, getting over Lindsay's neck. Little jab from Connor Tierney. Lindsay with the head movement, big oh. right hand, and down goes Connor Tierney for the second time in this fight. And let's see right now if Jake Lindsay wants to jump all over his opponent because he needs to right now. He has him hurt. He needs. Oh, this fight is over. What? Chris Batchelor leads it off. The victory for Jake Lindsay, the biggest of his life. Unbelievable. What happened right there? I, I didn't see what the referee saw. Wow, what an ending, Sean. Chris Batchelor waving off the count to the standing Connor Tierney. Right here, just that clean right hand, perfect. Right in the 
chin right there. You just, when you turn that chin, that's it. You don't see that coming properly. Your chin, chin gets turned like that. It kind of shuts everything off. You say, what just happened? You figure out, I'm on the ground. I got to get up. Chris Batchelor clearly did not like what he saw from Connor Tierney. Broke off the mandatory eight, as is his right as a referee, feeling that Connor Tierney could not safely continue. And that's the win for Jake Lindsay. And that's what we don't understand sometimes, Sean, when you see what's going on, you see it, but you don't hear what's being said. And if the fighter's not reacting properly to what the referee's saying, that's when they call it off. So if they tell you to do something, they tell you a command, and you're looking like a deer in the headlights, they're going to call it off every time. This win, in, this win for Jake Lindsay further enhances his run in BKFC again now 4 and 0 does not diminish Connor Tierney he's still a world class bare knuckle fighter dropping with in round 3 our referee in charge Chris Batchelor steps in and calls a stop to this fight at 1 minute 2 seconds into round number 5 for your winner by KO Gypsy Jake Lindsay and shall what a he came into enemy territory, hostile environment, got dropped, was almost dropped in the fourth round, came back for a huge knockout. So impressed with what he did tonight. I've known Jake Lindsay since the regional MMA circuit in the American Midwest. You see the class really consoling Connor Tierney. Tierney is obviously upset, not just at losing, but how the sequence ended. Clearly, Tierney felt that he could continue, but that was not the opinion of referee Chris Batchelor ending this fight. 62 seconds into round number five, and a massive win for Jake Lindsay again. This does not diminish Connor Tierney. He is still a dominant fighter in BKFC. This only enhances Jake Lindsay. And Sean, I'm glad this fight was in England because if that were in, in America, people would say that's a hometown referee. That's this and that. That's, but it, it wasn't. So. Jake Lindsay dropping Connor Tierney at the end of round two. Connor Tierney dropping Jake Lindsay at the end of round three to round number five, the right hand. And that is the final punch of the fight. The winner by way of fifth round knockout, Jake Lindsay defeats Connor Tierney. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare-knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship presents BKFC 49 Friday, August 25th. In the main event, two undefeated warriors collide with a world title at stake as Corian Gogo Salveski knuckles up with Gypsy Jake Lindsay. In the co-main event, the battle-tested gentleman of violence, Tom Schof, returns to take on the undefeated rookie sensation, Bryce Baby Yaga Henry. Don't miss History Unfold. Watch it live on the BKFC app. Download it at BKFC.com. Billy Wagner versus Bryce Henry. And Sean, it just jumps off the page at you right here. The five inch height advantage, but it is a seven inch reach advantage for Bryce Henry. He's going to have to utilize that because Billy Wagner's going to get in. He's going to try and rough his opponent up, do the dirty boxing. Bryce Henry's got to make Billy Wagner pay every time he tries to get inside and land those shots. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now set for our feature five of the night. Scheduled for five two minute rounds. In the welterweight division, presented to you by Lions Not Sheep Apparel. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight he wears black and gold. He stands six feet four inches tall. His official weight, an even 164 pounds. He is undefeated in the squared circle and 1 0. Fighting out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Here is the undefeated Bryce. And 
across the ring, his opponent fighting out the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black trimmed in red and yellow. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall. His official weight, 164.7 pounds. His bare knuckle fighting record stands undefeated at 3-0. for Billy Wagner, black and gold trucks for Bryce Henry. That double triple jab Wagner came out with right away. This would be a great fight in boxing. This is an even better fight, I believe, in bare knuckle. Jab to the body from Henry. As the jab to the inside stop, comes stop, Billy stop, Wagner. Stop, stop, step back, gentlemen, step the back. Separation clean, step back cleanly clean. is ordered by Andrew Glenn. Movement of Wagner. Wagner just waiting to bust and get it on the inside right there. You see the calmness of Henry. Henry just waiting to count. There's those feints we talked about. Hard fit to the body from Henry. And Wagner to react is the jab. Wagner hands higher and tighter. This great falls Montana crowd in full voice behind their fighter, Billy Wagner. Stiff jab from Henry. Henry 6'4 to Wagner's 5'11. It's that jab with the body that Henry's been able to land several times already. You see the slight pull on the long Henry jab. Oh, I love that. Bryce Henry used to a bait to the body and then he came up to the left hook. One two from Wagner, not there. To the body again. Wagner's doing the right thing. As soon as he sees that punch coming, he's got to counter. He's got to throw punches right back. He can't let Bryce get comfortable out there. Another fighter is going to be reckless in this bout to the inside right hand off the left hook. 20 seconds no remaining, man, round no number man. one. Half time plump snatched by Wagner. That is new to his bare knuckle game, but he did not throw from the half time plump. Sporting touch of hands right back to it. Break, break, jab break, on the entry break. from Wagner. Step back, step back, step. Don't hit him in the headlock. Don't hit him in the left. Glenn telling both fighters, break clearly when I say break. Time, There's time, the bell. Time. Punches from both. After the bell, we move to round two. Touch of hands. Round number two. Rapid fire start off of scratch to start the second round for Wagner. The one, one, two. A double jab. Like he said he was going to throw, he did it right there. Tom Foster, perhaps, between rounds one and two, calling for a bit more aggression from his fighter, Billy Wagner. See the poise, the technique from both of these fighters to the inside right hand, and then the clinch. The separation. North ahead movement. And we're not fully committing to that long jab. This is staying methodical. Left hand. To the body counter, left hand right back from Taco from Billy Wagner. Jab now from Henry, that was slick. And you can see how Wagner's back a little bit. He's leaning back on that right foot. He's waiting to unload with that right hand. Left hook to the body, left hook to the head from Wagner. There's a smear of blood under his left nostril. You see, not a lot of punches being landed by either guy. Very close, very tight fight we have here. There's the one-two again, and the hook to the body. Double jab right back to the right hand from Henry. These are educated combinations from both men. And it's great. You can see neither guy wants to let the other guy get the advantage. As soon as one guy lands a combo, the other guy is stolen. This is a great fight. Blood now flowing freely out of both of Wagner's nostrils. 30 seconds to go round two. Deeper lower stance for Wagner. Great defense right there Leaping for Henry. From Henry nearly landing. Separation again. A slight appeal saying he was punched in the back of the head. We fight on. Step back, clean. Step back all the way. They're initiating that clinch, getting the separation. 10-second clack. Closing stages, round number two. 
Very tight, very even here in our feature fight at 165 pounds. Right hand just before the bell lands from Henry as we move to round three. The fighters now ordered up to scratch by referee Andrew Glenn, sporting touch of hands. And number three. The fighters immediately to the jab, jab to the body from Bryce Henry. I'd like to see that jab to the body followed by the right hand. Jab, trying to get the clinch. That's the guillotine position that draws the break every single time under this BKFC rule set. There's a stiff jab, then the right hand just off the mark from Wagner. Good head movement right there. Oh, Henry did. I like when Wagner's coming forward throwing punches. Henry, good entry on the left hook. That was a slick punch for Bryce Henry. Jab again from Henry. They're going to the reset center circle. Henry now looking to come forward. Ten remaining round three. Right to the body left hook. What were we seeing about educated combinations <laughs> for both men, Chris? Very difficult from a lot of these fights. I mean, these guys are very high level, you can tell. And again, you can see down goes Billy Wagner. Nice slick punch in there. And Billy Wagner's a little hurt right now. Right hand then the left hand. Let's see if Henry tries to jump on his opponent right now. And it looks like he's going to. Touch of hands, left jab, knockdown number two. It was the touch of hands from Henry and immediately the jab to the face. I don't think he can see. Let's see if he's letting it go. We fight on. Henry now running into the pocket, looking to finish. Left hook right back from Billy Wagner. Wagner twice down here in round number three. Long jab again from Henry. Wagner on the back foot. Bryce Henry on the front foot. Overhand right chest misses from Wagner. Long jab again. Hook the jab, left hand, right hand. Big shots to the body. Goes Wagner reply. Right hand from Henry. There is the bell. Not a knockdown. The punch after the bell. Immediately ruled a non-knockdown by Andrew Glenn. Powerful shots right there. I love to that both guys were throwing hard shots. Over here, good little jab right there for Henry. And then that good left hand. Came right after the yeah, point. That just did the, the damage right there. That punch you didn't really see coming, landed. Okay, okay. Now, final seconds of the round. Wagner goes down, but Andrew Glenn ruled the punch came after the bell. A good left hand. They're just in the mix right there. That was not a knockdown. So officially two knockdowns. You see the ruling of the slip by Andrew Glenn. So presumably a 10-7 round for Bryce Henry. And I am impressed with Wagner. He was hurt there. Gutted it out. That was that dog we talked about. And got over there and, and continued to fight. Medical timeout before the start of round four. We will not have a round four. And we will have a huge victory for Bryce Henry. Now 2-0 and in BKFC. Man, that was an impressive performance right there. It didn't really look like he took much damage the entire time. He just got hit a few times. Rolled with the punches very well. You gotta hate that because Billy Wagner's was more than willing to fight. Physician stoppage TKO. That is a huge win against a first-class opponent and Billy Wagner for Bryce Henry. 2-0 in BKFC, 6-0 in pro boxing for the rapidly emerging 22-year-old. But Sean, it's not just that he's 2-0. We have a lot of other people who are 2-0. It's who he's beating with these 2-0 guys. He's beating under, both the guys he's wanted been undefeated, and he's beat both of them. He stopped both of them. Very impressive. This guy's just looking better and better each time. He's not getting hit clean. He's moving well. He has a very high fight IQ. I'm loving what I'm seeing from Bryce Hill. Ladies and gentlemen, our ringside physician steps in and calls a stop to this fight at the conclusion of round number three. For your winner, by TKO and still undefeated, Bryce Baba Yaga Henry. Sean, just what I said, this guy is going to be a problem for everybody. He's collected, he's cool, he's calm, he knows what he's doing. He's hard to deal with.
but he has physical attributes and he knows how to use them. I'm really impressed. I think the sky's limit for this guy. Huge disappointment for Billy Wagner, who entered 3 0 in BKFC. An elation and a huge victory for Bryce Henry, who exits 2 0 with two knockouts in BKFC. Wagner down twice in round two, rather round three. The position stoppage before the start of round four, and that is the fight. The winner by way of third round TKO, Bryce Henry defeats Billy Wagner. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare-knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship presents BKFC 49, Friday, August 25th. In the main event, two undefeated warriors collide with a world title at stake as Gorion Gogo Salveski knuckles up with Gypsy Jake Lindsay. In the co-main event, the battle-tested gentleman of violence, Tom Schof, returns to take on the undefeated rookie sensation, Bryce Baby Yaga Henry. Don't miss History Unfold. Watch it live on the BKFC app. Download it at BKFC.com. Here's our Crescent Tools tale of the tape for this lightweight bout. Tom Schoaf versus Bruce Watch Medial. And Sean, both these guys, identical reach. Tom Schoaf a little bit taller. Not too big of a difference right here. That's not what's going to sell us. Who's going to be able to come out there, dictate the pace, and fight when they want to fight? That's probably going to win the fight. Fight fans of Fort Lauderdale, we are now set for our feature five of the night scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the lightweight division presented to you by betonline.ag introducing you first fighting out of the red corner tonight he wears black he stands five feet nine inches tall his official weight 154.3 pounds his bare knuckle record stands at one victory opposite a single defeat fighting out of deep side florida by way of trinidad and tobago Bruce Iron Lion Lodge Media! And across, and across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight he wears black and white. He stands at even six feet tall. His official weight, 155.6 pounds. His bare knuckle record stands at three victories opposite three defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the popular bare knuckle fighting star from Lawton, Oklahoma, the gentleman of violence, Tom Show. And our referee in charge of the action, Sam Burgos. Bruce Lutch Medial said, I'm not looking for the knockout punch. There's confirmation of the friendly nature between these two fighters, although they are going to go extremely hard in mere seconds. Lutch Medial set his turn pitter-patter. I want to pitter-patter show all the way to victory. Round number one. Both fighters, as you see, in black trunks, blue glove tape for Tom Schoff, red glove tape for Bruce Lutch Medial. Snap jab from Schoff. Check left hook from Tom Schoff. Which medial coming forward, turned over that right hand. Jab again from Tom Schoff. Tom Schoff said he wants to really focus on not taking so much damage. He loves to get in there and bang, but he said it's not smart. He needs to be smarter. Showing a lot of good defense right now. Clean, clever right hand landed by Lutch Medial. Lutch Medial now running forward. A bit of that creativity. Some fighters, that would be taunting. That's just an expression of almost joy for Bruce Lutch Medial. You see, Schoff not bothered in the least. Schoff resetting. Good right hand and the left to follow from Lutch Medial. You can tell he talked about that pitter powder style. Lutch Medial is more of a volume puncher, not trying to hurt you with any one punch. Just come at you and touch you a lot. 50 seconds remaining, round number one of our feature fight in the lightweight division. Lutch Medial just missing with that right hand. Schoff missing with the jab. High shoulder from Tom Schoff. 
Very difficult to do in bare knuckle using that Philly shell. Very difficult to not get hit. There's some of the playfulness of Lex Medial. Coming to the inside lands a big right hand. Unconventional to the conventional. Jeff again off the jab. Lex Medial looking to parry. Medio coming forward. Good right hand again from Lex Medio. Show for him for that shovel uppercut to the body with the right hand. That is the end of round one. Round number two. Soft warning from Sam Burgos. Good right to the body from Schoff. And that's exactly what Schoff needs to do. If you're not protecting your body, you need to make a pay. This video has his hands out, not protecting his sides. Which video coming forward. Back to back twos without the one from Schoff. Schoff resetting. Jab to the body. Running forward again is Lex Media, lands the short left hand. Now into the click, Shelf digging to the body. Volume to the body by Lex Media, Shelf with the right uppercut. These are two likable people and two likable fighters. Good five seconds remaining round two. Swing and a miss by Shelf. Good duck under from Lex Media. Trying to showcase what he believes is vastly improved head movement. Good, deep Good deep. left hand. Ooh, I like that left of the body by Shelf right there. Through the left uppercut, then left of the body immediately. That being, that being said, this media is doing a very good job being difficult to hit. Now, referee speak, we saw the soft warning for the fingers extended round number one. San Burgos, that's a hard warning, saying you keep that up, it's a point deduction. The great boxing referee Jack Reese says, silent, soft, hard, point disqualification. <laughs> By the way, silent, according to Jack Reese, is just the very severe stare. There's a right hand, and there is the knockdown. The correct call. It wasn't too bad. It didn't hurt him too bad, but he did put his hand down in Lex Medial. No protest from Bruce Lex Medial. Well, he knew his that hand touched the, the ground. Two. He knew his hand touched the ground. It wasn't, it just knocked him off balance. It wasn't a knockout shot. It was a knockdown deep breath, shot. Deep breath. This is the part of the fight where Tom Show felt that he could start to take over. But again, Show getting that knockdown. Now a mouthpiece out. Time called by Sam Burgos. Right back into the mouth of Lutch Medial. And this is what Tom Show was waiting for. The third round, he felt like. Sam Burgos not playing with the hand fighting. Put an end to that immediately. You can hand fight, you can't try to interlock the fingers of your opponent as both men were doing in that last sequence. Burgos again, that's the third warning now, Lutch Medial extending the fingers towards the face of Schof. You have to figure if he gets an eye poke, he's probably gonna take away a point. 100%, Chris. Good right hand by Schof. He sat down on that too. Another right hand and another than the left hook from Schof. Good sequence. And this video is just a hard guy to look good against. He's so difficult to hit. Left hand again on the check. Check left hook from Schof. Now the right hand and another right hand. This has turned out just like Tom Schof figured out. Once this video slowed down a little bit, he's going to open up. Which video switching stances. Still wide open. Lands the left hook to the body from Schof. Shovel uppercut from Schof. 45 seconds remaining. This could be a point deduction. We're getting very close now. That's four warnings by Burgos to Lech Medial for extending the fingers outward towards the face of Tom Schof. No, I don't know if I've received four warnings without a point. Until now. Good left hand! Oh! Lech Medial nearly went down. I think Tom Schof thought for sure he was going down. He backed away like, okay. Didn't happen though. Good job by Lex Medial to be tough. Counter left hand by Lex Medial. Now to the body. Right hand by Schof. Another right hand by Tom Schof. Then off the jab. And Tom Schof is just showing that accuracy, that pinpoint accuracy he's developed. Lex Medial down now. And Sam Burgos ends it. And Tom Schof just keeps on rolling in BKFC. 
see. And you can see why he's a fan favorite. He just keeps getting better, Sean. Every time this guy gets out here and fights, more experience, more confidence, and he just continues to throw punches exactly where he wants it. Accuracy is so impressive for Tom Show. And here it is, the end of this fight. This landing, look at that big right hand, or big left hand, I should say. Just setting that up. That was a nice, clean left hand that did the damage. That was kind of just my belt. overall well, overwhelming. His opponent continued to show a lot of hard punches. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Sam Burgos, steps in and calls a stop to this fight at 1 minute 59 seconds into round number three for your winner by TKO, the gentleman of violence, Tom Show. Good performance for Tom Schoff. He just continues to keep rolling, getting better. And Sean, he wants that title fight. I see no reason why not to give it to him. A first class performance for Tom Schoff. Not without adversity. He did not rush. And now asking for a title fight. Most fans would agree. The finish. Lutch Media not able to continue, not wanting to continue. The winner by way of third round knockout, Tom Schoff defeats Bruce Lutch Medial. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare-knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship presents BKFC 49, Friday, August 25th. In the main event, two undefeated warriors collide with a world title at stake as Gorion Gogo Salveski knuckles up with Gypsy Jake Lindsay. In the co-main event, the battle-tested gentleman of violence, Tom Schof, returns to take on the undefeated rookie sensation, Bryce Baby Yaga Henry. Don't miss History Unfold. Watch it live on the BKFC app. Download it at BKFC.com.
Knuckle Fighting Championships is brought to you by Bucked Up Energy Drink. The MIA, Biscayne Bay, the place where the parties never stop, and tonight the fights are as hot as the temperature. It all begins with the preview. Three bouts to get your mouth watering, to get you ready for tonight's epic main card. As a professional fighter, Bryce Henry has never tasted defeat. All he does is win. On the other side of the ring, a gentleman of violence, Tom Show, has been a hallmark of the BKFC. Eight fights and win or lose, it's always a war. And then our main event. Tonight, we crown a welterweight world champion. Miami Zone, Gogo Slaveski and Gypsy Jake Lindsay from Kansas. Both fighters undefeated, both guys hungry. This should be a classic. And welcome to the Riley Coliseum here in Miami, Florida, in what should be an incredible BKFC 49. And you heard it right, championship on the line in the welterweight division in our main event. Folks, you are locked in and ready for the free view. But to get the entire card, you got to go to the BKFC app for $7.99 a month. Not only are you going to get all of tonight, that huge championship main event, you're also going to get next month the 22nd BKFC 50 in Denver. That's a huge deal. You're going to get all of our archive footage. You're going to get exclusive content like the Bare Knuckles Show with Brian Socha. So much in that package, the BKFC app, $7.99. What a deal. Guys, we're super excited to get in to this free view, but let's send it over to our guys. Sitting on ringside, Sean Wheelock and Chris Lytle. Sean, it's a big time cliche. Somebody's O has to go in our main event. That's absolutely true. And we're gonna have a new champion tonight. Cyrus, thank you very much. This is a really intriguing main event. As you said it, Cyrus, the winner becomes the new BKFC 165 pound world champion. Two undefeated fighters. 5-0 Goryan Slaveski versus 4-0 Jake Lindsay. And Sean, we talk about Styles make matchups very true in this fight. Two guys who go about winning different way. We have power, we have speed, we have precision. We also have experience in Jake Lindsay. This is going to be a great fight. Yeah, you know, Chris, obviously, let's talk about the co-main, which is very intriguing. Tom Show, this could be his last time in the BKFC. That is crazy to even think about. This guy <laughs> has been so great for the organization. But Bryce Henry, man, what a force to be reckoned with. Well, let's hope it's not his last fight, but you're right, he's been great, puts on great fights. Everybody loves Tom Show, but Bryce is just a different animal, man. Doesn't get hit so clean, so good, so precise. This is a, the next level guy. A lot of people think he's gonna be the champ of multiple weight classes at some point. All right, now, Chris, you're our resident betting specialist. I think that's a good way to say <laughs> you're a crazy gambler. <laughs> I got that problems. being said, <laughs> take a look at the odds here, what jumps off the page. Man, a lot of good fights right here. The thing I'm gonna go with, uh, Mejia's probably gonna have a, she's kind of a, not really under, but a very close fight. I'm gonna go with Mejia, very good, very close fight. That's what I'm going with. That's where I'm putting my money, minus 115. Well, listen, if you wanna put a little bit of money down, DraftKings has your hookup. You're gonna get a $50 bonus bet with a $5 deposit more for new customers. All you have to do is hit the QR code right there. Put in the promo code BKFC49 and you're on a pop and you're betting you're having a great time tonight. Let's take a look at the rules of BKFC brought to you by Mid45. All fights scheduled for five two minute rounds. Fights are scored by three judges on a 10 point must system. Hand wraps must be at least one inch below the bare knuckles. Punching in the clinch allowed. No three knockdown roll, no being saved by the bell in any round. No kicks, knees, elbows, takedowns, or submissions. And let's go to our first Crescent Tools, tail to tail. We open BKFC 49 with a bout in the cruiserweight division. Jomi Escoboza versus Esteban Rodriguez. You can see here, Sean, Rodriguez does have a significant five inch reach advantage. Also five pounds bigger right here. And this is a little bit different because Escoboza used to like to stay outside and land that jab. It's going to be hard if he does not have that reach. One of the biggest personalities in all of BKFC, Esteban Rodriguez. Enters 2-0 in Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Rodriguez has also had five pro MMA fights. In our fighter meeting, Rodriguez told us he wants to be relentless, 
Heavy pressure, he said, is my key, but he's also told us he wants to be a little more patient while still keeping his nature as an ultra-aggressive fighter. Rodriguez said, I'm putting a premium on head movement, I'm putting a premium on my footwork. Well, he knows his opponent has a great jab. He understands that. He can't let that be the ter determining factor. He wants to work, use head movement to get inside, work that clinch, no hard shots. Rodriguez also told us, I will hit a lot of level changes to work to the inside. One, twos as I move forward, and once on the inside, I will implement my dirty boxing. Fast start. He wants to start right away, come at his opponent. He wants to throw punches from all angles. He knows his opponent's more of a traditional boxer. He feels his odd angles are going to make it easier for him to land hard shots. Domi Escoboza, set for fight number three, promotionally in BKFC. Overall in the sport of bare knuckle fighting, Escoboza enters seven and one. He's also had four pro MMA bouts, one in pro boxing. Escoboza told us in our fighter meeting, constant forward pressures, pressure off of angles, high volume of punches. Well, he knows what he needs to do. He needs to stick and move. He feels like his opponent's going to come in, come right after him. So he's got to make him pay each time he does. He wants to do this little rock back, followed by a straight left. Great technique if, if he can use it properly. Escoboza told us, I believe my opponent, Esteban Rodriguez, is going to be extremely aggressive. He said, but when he's aggressive, Rodriguez can get wild, can leave himself open. Escoboza said, I have to exploit that over-aggressiveness. Something that really surprised me, he said he feels like he's going to be stronger than his opponent. And if his opponent gets close, he would like to clinch himself. He's been working on the clinch, feels like it can be a tool that he uses. It's tough to do against a guy like his opponent, Rodriguez. To get our evening started, we send it into the ring with Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Riley Coliseum here in beautiful Miami, Florida. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to BKFC 49. BKFC preview begins tonight with five two-minute rounds in the Cruiserweight division presented to you by Inkaholic Miami. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears white trimmed in green and red. He stands six, six feet, three inches tall. His official weight, 204.2 pounds. He holds an undefeated BKFC record at 2-0. and oh. Fighting out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Here is the undefeated Esteban Mohawk Rodriguez. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears galaxy print. He stands six feet, three inches tall. His official weight, 199.2 pounds. His overall bare knuckle fighting record stands at seven victories opposite a single defeat. Fighting out of Sunrise, Florida, by way of the Dominican Republic, here is the BKFC hitman, Jomi Escobosa. And our referee in charge of the action, Sam Burgos. Esteban Rodriguez said, I cannot allow Jomi Escobosa to control this fight from the outside, control with his jab. Rodriguez said, I'm willing to go walk through the fire. Round number one, rapid fire start to the surprise of no one for Esteban Rodriguez. He's in the white trunks, ruled a double slip by referee Sam Burgos, multicolored trunks for Jomi Escobosa. Coming right in just like he promised y'all, and man, this guy does not care who you are, he's coming to fight. Rodriguez now to the body in the clinch. Firing back with the right hand to the body, Jomi Escoboza. Sean Rodriguez so far has been able to end these fights quickly. Let's see what happens if he can't do it quickly. Is he going to be able to keep this pace up for this one? There's a big right hand that lands from Escoboza. Rodriguez walking through that. Partially blocks that overhand right now. Left uppercut to the body from Esteban Rodriguez. Get up. The separation. Second soft Good. warning to Rodriguez by referee Sam Burgos. Excessive holding on the inside. Overhand right just misses from Escoboza. Big straight block forward punches from Rodriguez. Escoboza resetting on the outside. 
Leaping into the pocket comes Esteban Rodriguez. More big swings from Rodriguez. Half type one now snatched by Jomi Escoboza. What an exhausting pace this is right here. They cannot keep this up for five rounds. To the clinch. There's the overhand right. That lands big from Rodriguez. Escoboza trying to counter with his back against the ropes. Another right hand from Esteban Rodriguez. 40 seconds remaining round number one. So these guys are looking exhausted already because these guys are throwing so much into every punch. Clever turn by Escoboza, putting Rodriguez's back against the ring ropes. Now back to the center circle, off the jab from Escoboza. Another good play. Right these guys are letting it all hang out right here. Tidual big swings from both fighters, and there's a big right hand to left. Another big right hand from Jomi Escoboza. Defensive clinch now from Rodriguez. Phenomenal start to this fight. Phenomenal start to this BKFC 49 card. On the left hook, landing from Rodriguez. Final seconds, round number one. Into the clinch. There is the bell. Sean, I could not believe it when I saw this was the first fight on the card. These guys could be a featured fight, a co-main event, something, and they're proving it right now. These guys are coming out and putting on a show for us. You came out nervous. Yeah. All right. He's, he's gassed already, nigga. Stop balling. And right here, look at this early action. There's a great punch right there landed by Escobosa, but man, the a, a hard shot. Like Throw a real check look. Just that the two is right hook him. just landed two, look. very good. He comes out and comes out the same bullshit. Don't get in a fist fight, circle, right? You're this is the very touch, end touch. right here. Another good him. right hand. That's been the punch that's been landing jab. early wow. and often for Escobosa. It's that right here. hook. Down the middle. Rodriguez has got to keep that and left hand. He cannot continue to get hit by that shot. And look, oh, just, right. just hard wow, shots. Wow. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. Rodriguez let's go. is used let's to go. getting let's these go. fights over oh, early. Oh. If it doesn't happen, let's he's going to get tired. First up to scratch to start round number two, Jomi Escoboza. Joined at the scratch line by Esteban Rodriguez. Referee Sam Burgo starts the second round. Overhand right lands from Escoboza. Rodriguez walking through that. There's the right hook. Overhand right against from Escoboza. On the duck under it to the clinch. Straight right hand on the left hand from Esteban Rodriguez. Fighters continuing to throw. See the active clinch, good refereeing from Sam Burgos, letting this fight flow. Now the uppercuts half tied point from Esteban Rodriguez. Overhand right again from Escoboza. Just that punch is there. Hey, yeah, that, that's the, thing, the, the great punch from right there. Rodriguez has got to say, making those uppercuts right Inside the head is right there. It's close and it's not landing for you. Four right hands now from Escoboza walking forward on the turn. Big right hand now, a big rear right uppercut, a right hand from Rodriguez. Counter right hand from Escoboza. This is a phenomenal fight. 65 seconds remaining, round number two. Big shots again, the turn on the right hand. You gotta hit the body right there. The, the head is being blocked. What is he giving you? He's giving you the body. That's what Rodriguez has never been in those situations where the fight's with us. And he's gonna learn from this. He's gonna get better. But right now, he's gotta work hard like hard in that body. The guy's blocking the head. Another right hook down, Lance from Escoboza. Overhand right, and ruled a knockdown. Rodriguez taking the mandatory eight. You see he's cut outside of his left brow. You could just knock him off balance right there. I'm not sure how hurt he is. It was a clubbing right hand. It was a legal shot. Thus the knockdown is ruled by Sam Burgos. Off the canvas, landing the big left hand, Esteban Rodriguez. 15 seconds remaining, round number two of this cruiserweight bout. This is a pace normally reserved for 125. Let's go, let's The overhand right from Escoboza. Right to the body from Jomi Escoboza. Escoboza keeps getting bent over, and he just stays in that position, Sean. He's giving that body right now to Rodriguez, and Rodriguez keeps trying to find a way to land that headshot. He needs to not go for that headshot, kill the body right there. The uppercut's gonna be there. Look to the body. You know what you have to do? You have to keep your fucking left hand up, because he's throwing that lead hook. You have to keep your left hand up. You understand me? That lead hook is the most dangerous. And look, the most important part in this fight is keeping your feet under you. If you get off balance and he hits you, that's when you're going down. You have to keep a solid foundation. These are the championship rounds. This is where you earn this shit, Mohawk. Look at me. Your feet. And here's that replay. You can see the way Rodriguez 
coming forward and that hit clubbing right hand to the almost to the back of that kind of side it's it almost it seemed like it forced him down pushed him down in a way but he's getting outside that kind of clubbed him in the back of that and pulled him down in a way like a back of a balance shot almost more of a forearm although that wasn't the intent no. of escoboza than a punch escoboza threw a punch it just that happens sometimes especially with close fighting like this is happening, and these guys are just wild person right now. It's all over the place. Odd thing. Round number three, right hook to the body from Rodriguez. Rodriguez off the jab, straight right hand. Escoboza counter right hand. Escoboza left hand from the southpaw stance, right hook. And the left hook from Jomi Escoboza. Short left uppercut. So Burgos talking to both fighters. The conversation to both from Burgos. Don't just pose with your head down for Escobosa. Keep putting that head down. Surprise. Body shots are not coming. And the Escobosa laying on the next higher percentage right there. To the head. To the clinch. Short left hands, now right hands to the body from Esteban Rodriguez. He needs to spin. Can't keep his back right there. He's going to spin and push his opponent back. And cut him back. Head movement to entry right to the body. 60 seconds remaining, round number three. Straight right hand from Rodriguez. Escobosa, good right hand, and a counter right hand right back. It's the left hand now from Rodriguez, right to the body. Two clean right hands from Esteban Rodriguez. That backs off Jordi Escobosa. Escobosa, good right hand. Rosen just missed time that second overhand right into the clinch, dipping his shoulder. All for action in the clinch from referee Sam Burgos. The head movement from Esteban Rodriguez, the entry now from Jomi Escoboza. The other hook snatched by Escoboza. You can see both these guys very tired this time right now, so these guys are taking as many breaks as they can. Time called, and this is a medical timeout. Called by referee Sam Burgos. Here's the chief medical officer of the KFC, Dr. Don Muzi. Clearance from Dr. Muzi. Final seconds, round number three. You hear the 10 second clack. Thunder from Escoboza into the clinch. Driving pressure from Jomi Escoboza, putting Rodriguez against the ropes. On the turn, the left hand right after the bell. We go to round four. Another very good competitive round right there, Sean. This is what I'm telling Back I'm and telling forth you. Deep action. Breath. Deep breath. Take it slow down. Deep breath. Here. Here, you get water. Step back. Step up with Shoot it down the middle. Draw me. Draw me. And right here, you can you see some of that back and forth action. Listen to the fucking time, right? Chico, right? Jab to his face. Don't worry about landing. Just throw it. Two to the body. Hard punch. There's that good right hook that Escobosa keeps landing. Jab to the face, don't worry about it landing. Two to the body, two, left hook, right hook. You can open him up to the body too with that straight two. Empty your mind. Empty your mind, Mohawk. What matters, your family, Achilles is there, let's go. Hey, this is where you gotta draw deep. This is where you gotta show your set apart, champ. This is where legends are made, champ. Let's go, let's go. Let's no regrets, go. champ, no regrets, champ. You know, Sean, I'm hearing people and they're trying to really motivate their fighter, but sometimes when you just don't have anything left, it's so tough to do. You can want this so bad, but it's very difficult out there. Start of round number four, immediate forward pressure off of scratch for Esteban Rodriguez. Big right hook from Escoboza. Rodriguez walks through that on the triple jab. Hook again from Jomi Escoboza. That left hand is just way too low right now for Rodriguez. He's got to keep that left hand up. Continue. To the plum. Continually getting hit with that right hook. Now snatched by Esteban Rodriguez. Cuts to the body with the right hand. The jab turning on the left hand. Straight punches now from the pocket for Jomi Escoboza. The hook again from Rodriguez. And then right just off the board. It's the right hook. Fighters now chest to chest. Driving pressure again in our fighter meeting. Escoboza told us he felt he would be physically stronger than Rodriguez. Trying to implement that strength, Chris, and that physicality in these situations. Putting Rodriguez is back against the ropes. Rodriguez has got to work on turning his opponent, pushing him back against the ropes. He can clean the strike when he wants to by breaking. 
Rear right uppercut, that was slick. Now the right to the body on the return from Escoboza. Escoboza taking himself off balance with the right hand, keeping the high tight striking guard. And the driving pressure from Escoboza, putting Rodriguez's back against the ropes. Ruling pace set and held by both fighters in this 205 pound bout. Tommy Escoboza, Esteban Rodriguez. Rear right uppercut again from Rodriguez. Overhand right again from Escoboza. Good body work. There's the right hook from Jomi Escoboza. Half tight plump snatched by Rodriguez. Chest to chest. Break once more from Burgos. We move to the fifth and final round. Sean, these rounds are very close. Go back though to round number two. That's for the low knockdown in this water. fight. Hey. Escoboza dropping oh. Rodriguez, presumably listen to an eight round. That makes it very saying. difficult. You have John, to win. Don't worry about the if job, Landy. One more two, round is going to make it at least a draw. Listen, as long as it's going to make it right. Just Just that right, that right hook don't once again. Rodriguez has a great chin. He's taken a lot of hard shots, a lot of those hooks. It really hasn't seemed to bother him too much. The one knockdown was kind of back of the head a little bit. Last round, coming up. Great uppercut right there for Rodriguez. Last round, coming up. Jeremy came back with a good right hand. This is good back and forth action, John. These guys are exhausted and they're just digging deep right now and sucking it up and trying to finish this fight. Both fighters up to scratch. Fifth and final round underway. Overhand right again from Escoboza. That has been his most effective punch throughout this fight. Rodriguez cannot continue to let his opponent put there. That's what he's got to do. He can't continue to let his opponent walk him into the rope. Right to the body. Very clever from Rodriguez. There's that right uppercut. Rodriguez has been on point with those uppercuts. Now with the jab, uppercut to the body. Escoboza uppercuts to the body with the right hand. If Rodriguez can keep that right hand, or that left hand, up, he would be having a much better fight. He can hit that right hook too many times. With 20 remaining, fifth and final round. Once again, Rodriguez just giving this back position right there, just put his back against him. To the guillotine position. Rodriguez knew that would get the immediate break, and it did from the three San Burgos. And to the body, counter right hand from Escoboza. Escoboza again dropping his head. Short left hand from Rodriguez. And it's hard to see how the refs, how the judges are going to look at this. Both guys look exhausted right now. I mean, one guy's pushing the guy through the ropes, the other guy landing shots, and who are they giving that to? Escoboza is burying his head right now and waiting for the referee to break him up. Get in the clinch. Escobosa tried to land the right on the separation. Right back to the inside comes Rodriguez. Driving pressure from Jomi Escobosa. San Burgos really starting to work now in this fight. Keeping the action flowing. Constant separations. Overhand right from Escobosa. Back to the clinch, the overhook. Held by Esteban Rodriguez. Stretch drive now. Somebody's got to land the big punch and see if they can feel around. round. There's the left hand, clubbing overhand right from Escoboza. Rodriguez trying to throw to the body. The short left hand, the right to the head, the bell, the end of the fight. So um, that was a very close fight. I mean, I have no idea how the, the judges are going to score. It could very well be a draw. It could very well be pretty lopsided. I don't know. Well, Chris, a draw is definitely a possibility because if our three Florida judges see it three rounds to two for Rodriguez, but with Escoboza getting the 10-8 because of the knockdown in round two, that math equals a draw. Exactly what I was thinking. A lot of those five rounds were very close. That's the thing, though. In such close rounds, you'd have to think, I mean, if, unless Yomi only won one of those, that would make a draw. But if he won two of those, he's going to win the fight. What's oh, the Sean. massive importance of recording knockdowns in boxing and in bare knuckle fighting? It would be so good to have some scoring that we could see the scores. Have you ever heard anything like that? Maybe? Something about real time open <laughs> scoring someday, Chris, in Florida. Wow, look at that. Rodriguez those 375, Escobuzos 
271, but just great percentages for both guys, really. Man, that was, that was, uh, these guys went to war, and you could tell at the very beginning how tired they were after that. I mean, in the clinch, Rodriguez did a little bit more work, but look at that percentage for Escobedo, just 94%, unreal. Our strike stats are presented by Bucked Up. Tony Escoboza playing to this very pro Escoboza crowd. He hails from here in Florida, Esteban Rodriguez from Michigan. I think there are a lot of Esteban Rodriguez fans now after those five rounds. I mean, coming out at that pace, you knew that had to slow down, but that's why when you saw after the first round, the second round, then it was all about heart. It's easy to be fans of both of these fighters. To end all suspense, we send it to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, before we go to the decision, let's have a round of applause for these two warriors. After completing the scheduled five rounds, here are the score totals from our judges at ringside. Judge Tate scores the fight 47-47, scoring the bout even. Judges Rupert and Streisand, 48-46, to the winner by majority decision. Xiaomi, the BKFC hitman, Escoboza. Huge win for Escoboza. Showed a lot of tenacity right there. So how he can be tired, he can go against a very tough striker and still come out on top. And that round two knockdown was massive. Without it, this majority decision win for Escoboza turns into a majority draw. Back and forth, both fighters going all out. A rapid fire, high octane pace. The knockdown in round number two. The winner, by way of majority decision, Jomi Escoboza defeats Esteban Rodriguez. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all new library of content, including behind the scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. Let's go! Tonight only, you'll receive 20% off all Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship apparel when you use the promo code BKFC49 at BareKnuckleShop.com. There's a huge selection of items to choose from with sizes and styles for everyone. You can place your order now at BareKnuckleShop.com. And again, a reminder, you can use promo code BKFC49 at checkout to get 20% off BKFC apparel. So knuckle up and save at BareKnuckleShop.com. To the featherweight division we go. Our tale of the tape is presented by Crescent Tools for Freddie Masabo versus Bovar Hanukkah. And Sean, even though Freddie Masabo is two inches shorter, he does have a five inch reach advantage. He's going to utilize that and try and get, stay outside, get inside, whatever he wants to do. He wants to make Bovar pay each time he tries to get close. The Ukrainian, Bovar Hanukov. Four and one overall in the sport of bare knuckle fighting promotionally. Bovar Hanukov, one and oh in BKFC. That victory coming in April of this year when Hanukov defeated his opponent in this bout tonight, Freddy Masabo, by way of unanimous decision. Hanukov has also had three pro boxing bouts. Hanukov said, I was not fully satisfied with the way I defeated Masabo by unanimous decision in April. I will be much more aggressive in this fight. Well, the thing that worked for him last time, Sean, and what he wants to implement now, forward pressure. He was able to get inside, do a lot of damage in there, but like you talked about, he feels very mentally focused right now, feels like he can get in there. He wants to seize every opportunity and make a difference. In the best quote of our fighter meeting, Sonikov said when we asked him, what's your best attribute as a fighter? His response, quote, I have a brave soul. <laughs> the
The Cuban now based in Florida, Freddy Masabo. Masabo told us he is extremely proud to represent Los Pinos, Cuba. He said, I fight for Los Pinos as much as I fight for myself. Masabo, two and one in BKFC. That lone loss again. April of this year on the wrong end of a unanimous decision versus Bovar Honikov. And Masabo, Chris, told us he is extremely motivated to win this rematch. He wants to utilize his speed to do so. Feels like 100% unhappy with that last fight. Understands he wants to get inside this time, take more risk. But one thing he's not going to do, he's not going to take a step backwards. Masabo holds a record of 4-0-1 in pro MMA, and he was a member of Cuba's famed national boxing team. He compiled a total of 308 amateur boxing bouts. It's a lot of fights, Sean, and in there he's learned a lot about body shots, uppercuts, being aggressive. Those are the keys for him to get in here and get the victory tonight. Masabo said of Bovar Honoko from their first fight, I know he's aggressive, but I felt his power, and I do not believe that he has legitimate punching power. To get us started, we send it to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our next fight of the night is a ring match. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Presented to you by Lions Not Sheep Apparel. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears red and white. He stands at even six feet tall. His official weight, 145.2 pounds. His overall bare knuckle fighting record stands at six fights. Fighting out of Maripur, Donetsk Oblast, Ukraine. Here is Bovar the Gladiator, Kalako. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears pink, white, and silver. He stands five feet, nine inches tall. His official weight, 147 and one half pounds. His BKFC record stands at two victories opposite a single defeat. Fighting out of Santiago de Cuba, Los Pinos. Here is Freddy Spider-Man Masalo. And our referee in charge of the action, Andrew Glenn. Bovar Honokov said, I have tremendous respect for Freddy Masabo, but I am not intimidated by my opponent. Our fighters up to scratch, round number one. Pink trunks for the Cuban, Freddy Masabo. White trunks for the Ukrainian, Bovar Honokov. Second left hook from Masabo. So it was a dominating performance last time by Masabo. I mean, by, hold on, I should say. Immediately into the clinch on the underhook. Now the overhook on the right hand by Masabo. That was slick. And a separation from referee Andrew Glenn right back to it. Monokov already cut above his right brow. He again into the clinch. Almost a wizard position for Masabo. Now the separation. Andrew Glenn telling Masabo, listen to me, break when I say break. You can just see Masabo is a different fighter this time right now. He's fired up, he's ready to go. Honokov leading from that cut outside of his right brow, coming forward. Overhand right pulled back by Masabo. There's the left hook by Masabo. 60 seconds remaining, round number one. See the feint on the hook by Honokov. Masabo on the overhand right, left hand again from Masabo. Honokov through the center circle. Heavy feints by Masabo. Right to the body, couldn't find it, overhand right. Masabo talking to Honokov. Masabo doing a lot of talking this time. He's got to be careful, let's see, again. he's too emotional right now. He doesn't want to gas himself out. 25 seconds remaining, round number one. You see the skill, the speed, the fluidity of both fighters. The blood is flowing freely right now from Bovar, though. Man. Both off the jab. A tight striking guard of Masabo. That jab not really fully finding its way through. Overhand right on the entry from Freddy Masabo. Smear of blood across the face of Bovar Honokov. Honokov off the jab. Jab right back to Masabo. That ends round number one.
And I think Masabo, Freddie Masabo, landed more punches in that round than he did the entire first fight, Sean. You can just see a different mentality. You can tell he's not happy with his performance last time. You see multiple cuts right now from the face of Right from the very beginning, tied up. Good right hand there. And here's that attitude. Look, I'm here to fight right in the middle. Let's go. He's really won this fight. Doing a great job of countering with those left hooks. Quick, fast punches. He said he was faster. He said he had speed. He had to utilize it. Seconds out called, and we are set for round number two. Two massively talented 145 pounders. You see that mutual respect and touch of hands. Now both fighters up to scratch. Round number two. Jab immediately from Asaba. Jab right back from Honokol. That is trying to work off of the one. Shout out to Freddie from this very pro Freddie Masabo Miami crowd. Torque out there from Masabo, right to the body. And the left hand from Honokov just off the mark. Masabo Chris continually looking for that lead and check left hook. On the overhand right, Honokov trying to work his way to the inside. And blood is just flowing from his nose right now. Two cuts on the face of Bovar Honokov, both open in round number one. First, outside of his right brow, then on the bridge of his nose. See a lot more strikes being thrown, more being landed right now from Asabo. You just saw the playfulness from Bovar Honokov, putting his hands behind his back, trying to bait him Masabo. Masabo just stood and looked at him. 55 seconds remaining, round number two. Ooh, a lot of blood. The flurry not getting through. Masabo striking defense. His high guard has been on point to this stage in the fight. Freddy Masabo with the jab. Otokov again trying to come forward. Left hook not there. Overhand right to the inside. Ever so slightly, the Ukrainian Bova Onokov turning up the temperature here. Ladder stages round number two. Slight walk down pressure. And 25 seconds remaining in the second round. Off the jab from Bova Onokov. Right hand. Counter right hand from Masabo. Is that left hook again from Masabo? And he's then telling Freddy Masabo, when you throw it, keep your fingers tucked. There's the left hook once more. The short lead left hook and the check left hook from Masabo. Continuing to land as we move to round three. Another good round right there. Freddy Masabo doing a lot of good work in there. Oye, oye, you're cansado or no? Look, three more rounds, three more rounds, okay? Three more. Oye, it's perfect, two ganas, two ganas, two rounds now. Three more, inteligente, por favor, okay? You can go very well, you can go very well. You can go very well, you can go very well. You can go very well, you can go very well. You can go very well, you can go very well, you can go very well. They're having a lot of trouble getting that nose to stop bleeding. Two rounds are going to go. Both, both guys right there doing their showboating, showing, I can do that too. You can do it, I can do it better. Now most of that, that is superficial blood right there. It's not in a bad place. It's not gonna cause him to not be able to see. That's why it's not a problem. Round number three underway. The rematch, Freddy Masabo versus Bovar Honokov. The chant of Freddie from this Miami, Florida crowd. Freddie cannot sit back right now. He's got to be aggressive to win this fight. He cannot let his opponent start dictating the pace. On a call, trying to work effectively into the mid range and then into the pocket. Counter left and the right hand from Masabo. Left hook not through. On a call, single mindedly determined to work to the inside. Masabo's doing his best work when he's right in the middle of the ring. He doesn't want to let his opponent push him backwards. Jab from Masabo, right to the body from Honokov. Goes again off the jab. Masabo's defense has been on point. 
continually blocking and parrying those punches. And just those jabs, those jabs do a lot of damage to his opponent. One, two, not getting through from Bovar Honokov. Five seconds remaining, round number three. Jab not through again. Honokov into the diversionary shots from the body. And again, you see the left hook from Freddy Masaba. There's the right to the body, one, one, two. The fight is so clever. Over and right, counter left hook from Honokov. Great, great hook right there from Masaba as well. Masaba is so fluid on the outside. Then you see Masabo with that high tight striking guard picking off those shots of Bovar Honokov. Honokov resetting in the center circle on the angle from Freddy Masabo. Masabo coming forward. Honokov again off the jab. Closing stages round number three, overhand right from Bovar Honokov. Masabo on the pole in the right hand. Shuffle of the feet from Freddy Masabo. We move to round four. What's been very impressive right there about Freddy Masabo has been his defense. He is, like you said, so he's on point tonight. He's blocking everything. He's getting just out of the way and firing back with shots immediately after Bovar's throwing his shots. Only fans brings you this exclusive look back of the house at the fighter from our co-main event, Bryce Henry. He enters 2-0. And you will see him at 155 pounds versus the eight fight BKFC veteran Tom Schof. Extremely interesting co main event, Chris. There's Tom Schof right there. Says this might be his last fight. You know he wants to come out, put on a show. I'm hoping it's not his last fight, Joe. We have to see. Confirmation the round number four is upon us. Time call by referee Andrew Glenn. This will be a medical timeout. You see Dr. Don Muzi, chief medical officer of BKFC, on the apron and the assessment of Bovar Honokov. This fight will continue. Pretty better pay attention to this fight, not worry about the crowd. Looks like a tough opponent for him. Andrew Glenn just told Masabo, watch with the open hand slaps. You have to make a fist. Slaps are illegal now under this fully unified ABC's bare knuckle fighting rules. You can see right now, I think, Bovar has a different mentality right now. He knows he's down, I think. If he needs to come forward, maybe he feels a little bit of pressure. He's got to put on a show. He's got to try and get a stoppage. Another one, two to the body from Honokov. Just through three rounds, Freddy Masavo has shown one of the most effective striking guards that we have seen in UKFC. And he's doing a great job of firing back immediately when he's open there, he's taking it. But Masavo, so pedigreed as an amateur boxer, member of Cuba's national team, 308 amateur bouts. And a cove off the left hand or right hand. Great right hand by Freddy Masavo, they're sneaking that in. left hand. Onokov told us in our fighter meeting he felt Masabo was very tense, very tight in the first fight. Masabo to that point looks a lot more fluid in this rematch thus far. Just looks relaxed left the first fight. He really learned his opponent. Now he's really able to capitalize on the mistakes. Onokov still coming forward on the right hand, left hand, but again you see that striking guard, that striking defense of Masabo. It's a thing. Konokov is not doing anything wrong. This is friend Masabo's on point. Honokov is occasionally landing to the body. He's having a difficult time landing cleanly to Masabo's head. Even when he does land at the body, it seems like Freddy Masabo comes right back with a hook or a straight right, something good, looping right. Five seconds remaining, round number four. And those punches picked off by Masabo. Back to the body from Honokov. Glenn telling Honokov you have to make a fist. Watch the extended fingers, watch the open hand slaps. Counter right hand from Masabo. On the right hand, left hand, again, those punches being parried, being blocked by Masabo. We move to the fifth and funnel round. Good fight right here. Both guys coming and doing work. That's all on the PC. Look. Masabo doing a very good job of doing what he does best. And that's get in there, block punches, and firing right back. Possible. Es around to central. Control la central. 
What a rarity, Sean. We have the first two fights of the night going at least to the fifth round. You can see the, the corner of Freddy Masalbo really trying to motivate their fighter right now. Medical timeout again called by referee Andrew Glenn before we start the fifth and final round. No, I think they're cleaning up, cleaning up water or blood or something. I think it must have been water. And a medical timeout, a housekeeping timeout. Indeed, excess water, blood, spit, other fluids and moisture. <laughs> fifth and final round underway. I think you can tell the corner of Freddie Masaba was really trying to motivate him not to take his foot off the gas to keep coming. Win this with exclamation point on it. Well, Varhonikov has continued to come forward. Freddie Masaba has continued to be fluid on the outside. To be extremely on point with his striking defense. Just like that on cue, the right hand of Honikov not getting through. And that is such a skillful right hand thrown by Bovar Honikov. Again, those punches not getting through. So difficult to block and burn up. You don't have the big gloves. Sabo waving Honoko forward. And Honoko taking himself off balance. Now the playfulness from Masabo and the playfulness right back from Honoko. Call for action from referee Andrew Glenn, who was not impressed by the histrionics <laughs> of either. Somewhere with BKFC Thailand referee Cristiano Bellini is smiling. He is the king of call for action. <laughs> So true, Sean. Yeah. This again from Masabo, actually looking away from his opponent, Bovar Honokov, into the crowd. On the right hand. That was right in the corner of Honokov. That was perhaps Masabo sending a message. And again, you see, that's Masabo looking directly at the Bovar Honokov corner. 25 seconds remaining, fifth and final round. Staying on the outside. Honikov still looking for the entry from the mid range. There's so much trouble getting inside and landing anything clean on Freddy Masabo tonight. The fighters pointing, saying, Meet me in the middle. They now stand in the middle in the center circle. On the right hand, left hand to the inside, the clinch, and the end of the fight. What a performance right there. Wow, that was impressive. I mean, Boulevard did a lot of. Very good things out there, but man, Freddie Masaba was on point tonight. You never know how the judges read this fight, Sean, but... Wow, that was impressive right there. It, I mean, if you look in there right now in the ring, it, it, it is kind of a bloody mess. Look at that defense we keep talking about. Both guys just going at it. Two fights now between Freddy Masabo and Bovar Honokov. Both going the distance, both non-stop throughout the 10 rounds. April of this year, Honokov winning a unanimous decision versus Freddy Masabo. We now await the tallying of the three Florida judges scorecards in this rematch. Fighter meeting Bovar Honokov was emphatic. He said, I don't care if I get cut. I'm not bothered in the least. We saw that. Two cuts <laughs> opening on his face, outside of his right eye, bridge of his nose around number one. He was not bothered in the Didn't least. Didn't deter him at all. He kept coming forward, kept throwing punches, continued to try to work the body, come upstairs afterwards. He was just tough. Masabo did great. And here's the final numbers. You can see a much higher percentage for Freddie Masabo. Bovar did throw more punches, but landed fewer. That defense was just on point tonight for Fred Masabo. Head strikes here, more of the same. You know, Freddie Masabo at a much higher percentage. It's not throwing as many, but landing much more. Our strike stats are presented by Bucked Up Energy Drink. To learn the winner of this fight, we send it to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen,
Let's put our hands together for one of the greatest rematches in BKFC history. After completing the scheduled five rounds, all of our judges at ringside are in agreement at 48-47 to the winner by unanimous decision. Freddie Spider-Man Masabo! And what a victory for Masabo. Back on track, three and one now. Avenge that one loss. You've got to be happy for what he's doing. The outpouring of emotions for the fighter from Los Pinos, Cuba, Freddie Masabo. Both fighters, quite simply, were outstanding in this fight. And that's because they are two outstanding world-class bare-knuckle fighters. Three rounds to two, 48-47 from the Florida judges across the board. The winner, by way of unanimous decision, Freddie Masabo defeats Bovar Honokov. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all new library of content, including behind the scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. And welcome back to the Riley Coliseum here in Miami. Absolutely incredible on this free view. If this has not convinced you to get the pay-per-view, wow. Take a look. It's our OnlyFans exclusive look. Gogo Slavesky fighting tonight for the welterweight championship, looking to keep that undefeated streak alive. Trains out of Miami. This guy ready for his moment in the sun. And his opponent, they call him the Gypsy Jake Lindsay, fighting out of Kansas. Four wins in the BKFC, no losses. What an incredible combat sports veteran who has found new life in BKFC. And he could be just hours away from being a BKFC world champion. Here's how you watch. Get the BKFC app, it's $7.99. Not only will you get the rest of tonight, as you can tell, it's awesome. You're also going to get September 22nd, Denver, Colorado, BKFC 50. You know that is massive. Lorenzo Hunt, Chris Camozzi for the championship. Wow. This has been incredible already. And you know it's only going to get bigger. It's only going to get bigger as we go with our main card and, of course, our main event for the championship. We just talked about BKFC 50. So let's go ringside, Sean Wheelock, Chris Lytle. Guys, I'm trying to catch my breath from a wild free view. That was awesome, and it's only going to get better. But 50 is going to be awesome. Cyrus, two outstanding fights thus far. Still nine fights to go, including our world title fight main event here in Miami tonight, BKFC 49. Friday night, September 22nd, it's the historic BKFC 50. We will be in Denver, Colorado. You see the top four fights on the card. They're presented by Mitt 45. And Sean, that main event is something dreams are made out of. When I saw Chris Camosi was getting involved, I was so happy. I've seen him fight in the UFC many years, but man, he's been on point. Two quick knockouts, understands this sport, but Lorenzo Hunt, I mean, let's face it, he's been the greatest for us. Multi-weight class division champ. I mean, this is a great fight. I'm so excited to have this as the main event. You see the heavyweight bout, Josh Copeland, the PFL veteran versus a former boxing world champion. Steve Herelius was a cruiserweight world titleist, set for his second fight at BKFC. Herelius enters 1-0 promotionally. Just nothing but great fights on this card. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more. I cannot wait to see this card. I know we're going to have to wait a little bit of time for it after, but uh, it's going to be well worth the wait. 
Chris. We have outstanding crowds in Florida. We have outstanding crowds in Denver. Historic that earlier this month in August, the Association of Boxing Commissions, that is the governing body for combat sports professionally in the United States, passing the debut ABC's Unified Rules of Bare Knuckle that literally opens up this country for the sport of bare knuckle fighting. And Sean, a lot of states are starting to understand how good bare knuckle is, how much safer it is in my opinion. So I think people understand that. We can't wait to see what's gonna happen. And all these states are gonna open up. We're growing, we're getting bigger, but like you're talking about going to Denver, going to, I mean, we've always had great crowds here. Whenever we go to these new states, it's been amazing to me how many people show up to what we're doing. Chris, here in Miami, we're counting down to tonight's main event. This is intriguing. The winner will become the new BKFC welterweight world champion. Two undefeated fighters. Gorion Slavesky is 5-0, Jake Lindsay 4-0. Loving it, Sean. They go about it different ways. Gogo comes in, throws bombs the entire time. Lindsay's tough. He's been around. He's a veteran of the sport. He understands all the little tricks. So is it going to be that power? Is it going to be the knockout? Ability of is it going to a go go that's going to work or is it going to be Lindsay's slickness, his smartness, his veteran you know, thing that he brings to the table? Is that going to want to win it for me? I don't know. It's going to be fun. Cyrus, you know, Chris and I have this theory. A lot of people in the fight world subscribe to it. The early cards of the night set the tone for the rest of the night. I think the tone is fully set for our main card, nine fights to come here in Miami. Yeah, you know, two five round wars, right? These, these weren't sleeper fights. See, these guys brought the heat from beginning to end, and that's what you can expect tonight. When you look at both our co-main event and our main event, that's really what we're expecting from both of these fights as well. Now guys, there was a lot going on here with BKFC, and not just domestically here in the US, but internationally as well. Yes, this is happening. This is a real thing. We've talked about it. It got delayed, but now we have a date. November 4th, Pattaya, Thailand. Bukau taking on Sunshine. This is a legendary fight. This isn't just a BKFC legendary fight. This is legendary for Muay Thai, for combat sports, period. A dream fight inside our squared circle. Absolutely insane. Thailand has been tremendous. And while we stay international, the 17th of November, we get into Europe for the very first time, and we go to Bulgaria. And you're thinking to yourself, why Bulgaria? If you've ever been in Eastern Europe, you know they love to fight. They love kickboxing, they love boxing, and they are ready to embrace bare knuckle fighting in Bulgaria. Absolutely can't wait for Bulgaria. I mean, we're going everywhere. And I can tell you right now, we got Sosha in the middle of the ring pumping up this crowd. They don't need pumping up. They have just watched two absolute wars and they know what's coming. They know that we have that crazy co-main event with Bryce Henry and Show. They know we have the championship matchup. And if you want to get involved and not only watch the fight, we'll put some money on the fight, there's your QR code. You're going to get a $50 bonus bet with a $5 deposit. At least $5 deposit, put in BKFC 49, and you're good to go. DraftKings has got you hooked up all the way through. Hit the QR code. It has been electric here in Miami. BKFC is brought to you by Bucked Up Energy Drink. Only fans. Crescent Tools and Lions Not Sheep Apparel. We'll see you at the top of the hour. BKFC 49 from Miami, Florida. It's all going down. Don't miss it. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all new library of content, including behind the scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. Let's go! Tonight only, you'll receive 20% off all Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship apparel when you use the promo code BKFC49 at BareKnuckleShop.com.
There's a huge selection of items to choose from with sizes and styles for everyone. You can place your order now at BareKnuckleshop.com. And again, a reminder, you can use promo code BKFC49 at checkout to get 20% off BKFC apparel. So knuckle up and save at BareKnuckleshop.com. Fighting Championship is live from the 305 at the Miami Dade Fairgrounds. This is BKFC 49, Slovesky versus Lindsay for the gold. And it starts right now. is brought to you by Bucked Up Energy Drink. The beautiful Miami skyline in a city known for its parties. There is no party like a BKFC party in the 305. The main card.